Uh, here at Hope, we love to connect with uh, God, each other, and our community through worship, study, and service. Uh, so thanks for being here today. I uh, want to remind you uh, that, uh, well, I'll, I'll do that later. I'll give you the announcements later. How about that? Uh, but thank you for the, your continued giving uh, and all the good things that you do uh, here at Hope and for those around us. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. Would you please stand as we join together and join us online? Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's Palm Sunday. All right. Everybody got their palm fronds? All right. Cool. Let's worship together.
make all things you made all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good you make all things work together for my good yes you make all things work together for my good yeah all right let's continue to worship You may be seated. I believe we have a video. The next day, the great crowd that had gathered heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, 
Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. This crowd praised him. They celebrated his miracles and with great expectation told everyone about him. But they did not know him. They were waiting for someone who would rule with strength and might. But he came as a humble servant. They wanted him to finally bring their people glory, but he wanted to change them so their lives would bring God glory. They were expecting a general who would crush their enemies, but he came saying, love your enemies. They thought he could offer them deliverance from their oppressors, but he came offering deliverance from sin. This crowd would soon realize that Jesus wasn't going to be what they wanted, and they turned on him before they ever realized he was what they needed. So as they yelled, crucify, Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, I am not that kind of king. His kingdom isn't what you see here. It won't be established by chaos and war. His kingdom is in our hearts. His kingdom is truth. His kingdom is goodness. His kingdom is righteousness. He is the humble king, the king of healing, the king of forgiveness, the king of love. Today, we lift our voices. We cry, Hosanna, save us. Save us from our sin. Come dwell in our hearts. Hosanna, we worship you. Jesus Christ, our king. There's a red Hyundai in the parking lot with the alarm going off. That's a new one. That is a new one. <laughs> red Usually Hyundai. it's like, hey, there's a bake sale. Well, that, yeah. Sometimes it's, there's a red Hyundai. That time, uh, that time. I think we see whose it is. <laughs> hey, let's watch her. <laughs> All right, let's sing a hymn. And if the ushers would please come forward for our tithes and offerings. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear, voices of truth thou sendest clear. Let's get the kids up here. Oh, here they come. As we sing, Love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with 
all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Oh, I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. Thank you. <laughs> as we continue to worship, will you join with me as we go together to God in prayer? Almighty God, what a great and glorious day it is to be together as the body of Christ, to remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, to reflect on how the people praised him as their king and their Messiah, calling upon him to save them. Only they didn't know exactly the kind of saving he would do misunderstood, with hearts and minds placed perhaps on earthly things, just like us. We cry out to you to be our Savior, and yet sometimes we're not even sure what that means or what that looks like or what salvation is really for and really from. Thank you for being the God that we need rather than the God that we would often expect. Continue to surprise us with your grace. Continue to surprise us with your mercy and your love. Open our eyes 
that we might see glimpses of truth that you have for us so that like children we might praise you with all that we are for you are worthy you are the God who saves us Hosanna to the King of Kings like children we lift up to you the requests on our hearts and minds we ask that you would be with those who are on our hearts and minds, those we care for, and the needs that we're aware of, both theirs and our own. But again, being reminded that you are the God who knows our needs even before we ask and knows what we need even when we're not even aware what that is. What a good and glorious God, loving and kind you are. Be in this time of worship as we celebrate your son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save us. For it's in his name that we pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A couple of announcements for you this morning. Our Easter egg hunt will be today at 1230. So be sure to come back and join us. Women of Hope Bake Sale is going on in the lobby. So make sure you stop by. Uh, we will have a celebration of Britt Holdren today at Fred Howard Park in Pavilion 9, uh, beginning at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so make sure you bring food, if you'd like, uh, that you can share with your family. Again, that's Fred Howard Park today at Pavilion 9, uh, starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Lunch and Learn is today at 12.15, as always. Make sure you find the Zoom link either online, uh, on our website, or in your weekly word. And, of course, this is Holy Week. So for Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, which are this Thursday and Friday, uh, we will have services outside on the North Lawn, uh, both at 7 p.m. Uh, again, Maundy Thursday, make sure you bring a picnic dinner to share with your family, uh, bring a chair, whatever you'd like to sit on out there in the North Lawn, uh, and then we'll have a service that follows. Uh, and then again on Good Friday, we'll have another service at 7 o'clock. Uh, again, that's this week. And then Easter Sunday, uh, sunrise at 7 uh, out on the what used to be the basketball court, and then 9.30 here and 11 uh, live here in person and, of course, streaming at 9.30. So uh, make note of those things. Today's passage is from John chapter 12, uh, verses 12 through 16, uh, and we have a guest who will lead us uh, in that passage. But uh, before we do that, uh, would you join with me in this assertion of God's Word? This is the Word of God. It teaches, it corrects, it reproves. It trains in righteousness. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do, as LB leads us. Oh. Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branch. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it. As it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they had done these things to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The 12th chapter of the Gospel of John could be considered the turning point in that particular gospel. Up until today's passage, Jesus has found great favor among the people. The night before his entrance into Jerusalem, where he'll be hailed as their long-awaited Messiah and King, 
Mary, the sister of Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead, decides to anoint Jesus with a very expensive perfume. Mary breaks open this alabaster box and she pours this costly perfume on Jesus' feet, filling the room with the aroma and wiping Jesus' feet with her hair and her tears. An extravagant display of love, to be sure, but one that is seen as wasteful, particularly in the eyes of Judas, the one who would eventually betray Jesus. He feels the perfume could be sold for a great deal of money and that money be given to the poor, though according to John, uh, he makes it very clear that Judas was not really concerned for the poor. In fact, he had a habit of skimming off the top of the collective money and keeping a portion for himself. But Jesus understands the significance of Mary's act, even if Judas and the rest miss it. She's preparing him for burial, which he knows is less than a week away. How strange it must have felt to Jesus that on the following day, he would enter Jerusalem through the Eastern Gate just as the prophets said Messiah would do. How strange it must have seemed for the crowd to gather, shouting, Hosanna, save us waving palm branches as a symbol of victory and triumph and peace, laying down their coats as Jesus enters the city on the back of a donkey. How strange it must have seemed for Jesus, knowing how quickly their cheers would turn into shouts of crucify him. Perhaps their change in tone was based in their fear, their fear of placing their faith in a humble king, knowing full well what Rome was capable of and believing how much a conquering king and not a suffering servant is what they needed. Sure, Jesus had brought Mary's brother Lazarus back from the dead, a powerful miracle, but seemingly insignificant compared to the power of Rome. Sure, they had heard his sermons about love, turning the other cheek, going the extra mile, but what was that compared to the world superpower of his day? No, as far as the people were concerned, Jesus had to be something else in order to fulfill their dreams of freedom. Love would not cut it. Only brute force in excess of the armies of Rome could accomplish such a great task. And they'd tried before. Insurrections were common both before and after Jesus. In fact, it was an insurrection some 30 years later that finally led Rome to destroy Jerusalem entirely and scatter the Jewish people throughout the world. Jesus, as far as they were concerned, had to change his tactics, had to adjust his approach. If he would ever be seen as a conquering king, that they not only felt they needed, but they now expected him to be and were announcing him to be. But Jesus knew that love and not raw power, love is what would set them free. Love, not rules or religion, would not only change their lives, but in fact would change Rome and eventually change the entire world. Love, not a sword. That is what this king has in his hand. A hand that will bear the scar of a nail in resurrected form. You see, the real enemy wasn't Rome, after all. No, the real enemy is much more to be feared than anything Rome could inflict. It's the darkness that lives in the heart of every man, woman, 
and child. It is the desire to assert one's own will over and above the will of God, often to the detriment of others that was, and frankly still is, the real enemy. Sin, the willful, deliberate violation of God's moral principle to love. Love, selfless, sacrificial, Go the extra mile. Turn the other cheek. You've got to be out of your mind if you think that will change anything kind of love. Something they needed, both shown for them and for their enemies. Something needed then, and perhaps even more today. See, the Romans had perfected the cruelty of the cross, both as an excruciating form of death and as a form of sheer terrorism to keep the masses in line. But love, the love of God, surrendered to that cruel death, would soon show itself as the greatest power in history. Yes, Jerusalem. Jesus is your king. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. He may not look like much now. He may not look like the king that you're expecting, but make no mistake. He is your king, yours and mine, for all people, for all time. Soon your shouts of crucify him will replace your shouts of Hosanna, save us. But don't be mistaken. That's exactly what he's about to do. He will save them and us. For he defeats the foe that we all face, selfishness and pride, which hold out the false hope of salvation and which ultimately lead to emptiness and a life that is wasted. In the end, victory and abundant life are not found on the back of a conquering stallion, but on the back of a donkey. Not found in the strong arm of a conquering warrior who announces his victory with a parade and great fanfare, but in the soft spoken words of an itinerant preacher, found in the outstretched arms of a homeless carpenter who announces his victory from the cross. It is finished. Glory be to God. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, in ways that we never expect. Thank you for destroying those expectations, for revealing to us the truth about what we need and about who you are. Knowing the weak before him and knowing the weak before us, We celebrate your son, Jesus Christ, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Maybe not the king we expect, maybe not the king that we want, but most assuredly the king that we need. Help us to follow in his example and in his teachings to love one another as you have loved us, to love 
our neighbor, to pray for our enemy, to be the grace and the mercy that you have been to us in your Son, who sets us free from sin and death and calls us to be the hands and feet of Christ to those around us. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So Receive the benediction, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen.